Thanks for joining us. I'm Marlon Bowling with a look at your ag commodity trade here as we get closer to the end of our short trading week here. And uh, this morning, before we open things up, USDA came out with some new uh, weekly export sales numbers. And in case you missed them earlier this morning, uh, we can refresh your memory here by popping them up on the screen. And it really was not anything to, uh, as they say, write home about with the corn coming in at only 101,200 tons. The soybeans had a paltry 560,800 tons. And the trade has been getting used to numbers well up into the millions or even over 2 million at times on soybeans. And the wheat at 131,000 this time around. Uh, very low numbers for all these, but then the analysts are quick to remind everybody that these numbers were taken as of uh, the week, including the Christmas holiday. So uh, they expected them to be low, but boy, they were very low. Here to talk about our grain trade activity in this segment, we have Scott Geeka standing by. He's at the edge of the CME Group trading floor in Chicago, and he is with Longleaf Trading. He joins us right now. Hey, Scott, how are you? Good. How are you? I'm doing fine. Happy New Year to you. Uh, Happy wanted New to, Year to you guys wanted too. to get your thought here on this grain trade as you look at it right now. Uh, how would you gauge the market reaction to those uh, disappointing numbers that came out in the beginning today? Well, with the weather and, you know, the holidays coming in, even this week, you know, trading has been extremely light. You know, the agricultural market just across the board has been in a bearish tone for the most part. You know, one of the numbers that I seen this morning, which you were talking about the exports, is the soybean export uh, for December was up 261 percent versus last year. That's a pretty big increase. So with the weather still a concern, you know, you're still seeding sideways markets, you know, pretty much a bearish tone overall. You know, 970s, we're going to be a little bit bullish above 970 in soybeans. Corn market, you know, if we break 350, we could go all the way down to 335. You know, one market that did stand out today was the wheat market. You know, as soon as we broke that, that 430 level, you know, we seen a big selling pressure coming in, into play. You know, the line in the sand with the wheat market is roughly around that 400 level, so we still have a long ways to go with that. March wheat right now is trading at 430 and a half. That's down three and a half cents. And we have July Chicago wheat down three and three quarters at 455 and a half per bushel. On the Kansas City wheat market right now, you have your March at uh, 436 and three quarters. That would be three cents above our low of the day and exactly three cents from our high from last night. We're down three cents from our close yesterday. New crop July, Kansas City wheat down three at 466 uh, even per bushel. Uh, what's your thought on this warm spell moving into the uh, southern plains here, Scott? There's a debate as to whether that will last long enough to get the, green, uh, the wheat to green up enough to put it back at risk if another cold snap came in. What do you hear for the outlook there? Well, that's everything is going to be focused on the weather, not even just here with the cold snap just being across the country. I think one of the reports that came out earlier in the week was the average temperature just across the U.S. was 11 degrees. That's well below normal average temperatures. So, mm -hmm. I mean, weather is going to be the main focus moving forward. Hopefully this, this warm up is going to you know, have an effect. Hopefully it sticks around for a little bit of time. All right, let's look at the corn and soybeans, too, in this segment here. And uh, on the corn board in Chicago right now, we have that nearby March contract still unchanged. It's like you can't get it to move today. Uh, May unchanged at 359 and a quarter. We have July down one tick at 367 and a half. And on the soybean trade, soybeans have been chopping around a little bit. We have the March contract now two and a half higher at 970 and a quarter. The trading range has been almost a dime wide from last night till now. Uh, July up two and a half at 990 and a half. And the cotton market, that's the one that uh, made new highs for the move here at 8005 on the March contract early today. And then it uh, quickly turned around and now we're at 78.09. For a while we were under 78 cents. Uh, we are now down 116 points on the day. Scott, I'll bring you back here in just a moment and you and I will find out what's going on in the cattle trade to have some new news there to share with everybody when we come back. See, the dollar index is still up 100 points on that March contract, so that could be uh, a factor in the markets as well. We're talking right now with Scott Geekus. He is with Longleaf Trading, and he's at the edge of the trading floor in Chicago. Scott, uh, thanks again for being part of the program here as we shift our attention over to what's going on on the livestock side. 
we have to look at the live cattle trade and point out that we touched limit down here at times this morning. Let's look at our quotes right now and review. So on the live cattle board uh, in Chicago right now, uh, the nearby February contract still not that far from it. It's down 290 at 119.35. We touched limit down three bucks lower uh, about an hour ago, I believe. We have April down 274 now at 121.08. That one hit limit down temporarily. Uh, June down 227 at 112.58. And on the feeder cattle side, we're sharply lower there as well. Uh, we have the March contract on the feeders. Now at 142.25, that is down $3.30 from our close yesterday and basically about $3 under our high of the day that was set right at the open. We have April down 332 now at 142.50 per hundredweight. Also, same story there, uh, about uh, $3 and a dime off of its earlier high. And then we just received word here, uh, Scott, we had cash cattle trade out in the plains at uh, 122 per hundredweight and uh, 195 on a dress basis out there. That, if, if the math uh, holds correctly here, that should be about a dollar under what we had last week. That, I understand that could be a disappointment to the trade, but it's hard to justify the market going almost limit down when you only have a dollar move in the cash trade. There's gotta be more at yeah, work right. here. What do you think is going on? Yeah, I mean, the weather, for the most part, has been the biggest concern. That's why it's keeping the weights at bay, if not bringing them down slightly. Um, you know, that 120 level in the live cattle market, I've been talking about that for weeks now. You know, you've seen a huge spike in a bunch of volume coming in. As soon as we broke that 120 level, you know, it spiked down pretty quickly. That's why we went limit down. Now you're seeing a little bit of a recovery. But below 120, uh, we, we have to be, you know, a little bit bearish here. So what do you hear about fund positioning in the cattle right now? Well, that was the line in the sand for, for weeks, is that 120 level. So that's why you're seeing that liquidation coming in. So we'll see where the open interest ends up after today's move. But right now, if it stays above you know, 120, you, you gotta be a little bit bullish, but below 120, you gotta stay bearish. Are the funds still net long? The, it, coming into today, yes, the funds were still net long, positioning in, playing off of the weather you know, going into after the holidays and stuff like that, yeah. Okay, now what about on the lean hog side? How are the funds set up there? Well, the lean hogs, you know, it, it's the cutoff values are still providing support to the hogs. Still pretty quiet market, not really a lot of movement. You know, weights are still a little bit higher due to the weather. Uh, not really, you know, too concerning. The weights haven't come in as expected. The pig crop was up about, you know, three and at 3.2% versus last year. You know, the delay in slaughter coming out of the U University of Illinois, that is pro uh, providing stronger prices as well. So, I mean, we still remain bullish, very bullish above 72. All right, now I wanted to ask you about this uh, U.S. dollar value. We saw that during the break that the dollar was raising about 100 points here today. Stock market, sharply higher again, more new record highs in the stock markets. And the ongoing question here in the ag commodity trade as we start out 2018 is your impression of how much that could have an impact here on the ag commodities. Well, that's, that's with, you know, the stock market hitting all time highs, you know, there's really, you know, I was on the other day talking about the stock market and there's extreme risk. Doesn't matter if you're long or short. You know, with the stock market, I mean, the market's been up 26% or so. You know, even if it has a 10% pullback, it's still better than a five year average. So if you put new money in, you're at risk for a little bit of a correction. And, you know, if you don't, you have risk for the tax reform and all the other, you know, financial, you know, the fiscal's coming out, pushing it slightly higher. So it's, it's a very slippery slope with the, the, with the equity market is in there as well. That's why you're gonna see start, you're gonna see, see some of the funds start moving more to commodities, just because there's just more opportunity. I would be remiss if I didn't point out the new uh, beef cutout values, even with the sharply lower futures trade. We have these uh, new midday updates here and the choice cuts were higher today. Uh, I wanted to make sure I point that out. 61 cents higher on choice cuts. We had select cuts up $1.51 this morning. And on the uh, pork carcass cutout values, they were down 53 cents today. And we had the belly market down $1.11. Scott, uh, thanks for uh, talking with us for a while today. And uh, again, happy no new year to you. Wish you all the best. Happy for this year. Yes. All right, take Thank care you. of yourself. This is Scott Geekus. He's with Longleaf Trading in Chicago. Big moves, John, in some of these markets okay. now.